Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So you can see how like relatively the skew was very flat at the beginning and as time went you can kind of see how it's skewing more and more to the right. And we felt like this was important. If you really wanted to learn the skew, you kind of had to com needed something to compare against. So we we built this uh, application so you can play back the skew. So you see how like high the skew is right now. And if I if I should play it back to the beginning, you see how relatively flat it was. It was even leaning slightly towards the dollar being weaker. So right at this time was exactly this time right here. Right? So as you play and move it forward to like October, it started skewing the other way. So right around here, was when, uh, according to the option skew, there was more chance that the dollar was going to appreciate uh, in terms of the option pricing. And then you can see how, how uh, it's getting skewed and it kept on being skewed. And also, also look at how, how these options, like this is the volatility number right here. You see how low it was when it started? As time moved on, you can kind of see how the volatility is going to start creeping up to the point where it's now. So this is very high volatility uh, using the past one year historical volatility information. And also, you can see how exaggerated the skew is. So you know, how do you take advantage of this? Basically, what, what you're getting from this is you just know which way the options are leaning. I wouldn't say go ahead and definitely buy the dollar just because it's a guarantee. You just know which way the option's leaning, and then you have to take other factors uh, such as order flow, uh, volatility, uh, the actual like uh, macroeconomics of uh, you know Greece being maybe not being able to pay that debt, and you take all that into consideration. And then you uh, make uh, you know your trades accordingly. Now, this is kind of like it, it seems to me that this is kind of telling me that even the December's of this year is skewed to the dollar. Makes me think like the dollar is maybe going to rally for a while against the euro. Uh, if you look at the chart. Let me look at the six months chart right now. You can see how much it's rallied. So, you know, if, if you had a long term bullish outlook on the dollar versus the euro, I would do the same thing that, you know, most people do is like, hey, at this point, I don't know if I would make a bet on it going higher, but, you know, maybe you wait for it until it retraces and then you can put. Uh, a position on right here. Uh, kind of um, same thing with gold. Uh, I was kind of bullish in gold, and what I did was I, you just load up every time you think technically uh, it's a good time to buy. One thing that you do know is you do know the skew is high to the upside. So if you did like a call spread, you are able to actually sell a very high premium, so it's a good time to good time to do the trade. So let's say like you bought the June 82, 86 call spread and you were able to do it for, um, I don't know, let's say like a dollar or something or dollar ten, you actually, you're actually getting a lot better bang for your buck than before when the skew wasn't as high. Um, so you can actually use the skew to your advantage because all these upside is overpriced. 
and you can also buy cheaper protection. Uh, one thing also that you can compare to is over here on the left, EUU is, uh, is the euro based and you can see how it's skewed to the other way. So this one is skewed to the downside, uh, meaning that the euro is going to depreciate against the dollar and you see the other chart here and it's appreciating up. Uh, for the for the currencies, it's really good because this, this curvature right here should be relatively flat. The fact that it skews one way or another, it, it's kind of telling you that uh, that's where the options are pricing the movement at. Because uh, current, whether the dollar goes up and down or the euro goes up and down, it should relatively be 50-50 and uh, should not have um, other impact on uh, how much, which way it prefers to go uh, mathematically. Now, this is this is for the euro. Uh, let me see if I can look at some other ones. Look at the British pound. It's also leaning towards the the dollar being stronger against the pound. Um, this is the Australian dollar. You can see it as well. Uh, Canadian dollar. Uh, Swedish corona. Uh, so like you can see right here, how do you see how the steepness is not as much? And that's probably because uh, people might think that they will be less affected since they, they're not part of the euro. Uh, let's look at the Japanese yen. And you can see the Japanese yen is the opposite. You can see how, uh, according to the options, uh, people are saying that the Japanese yen is actually going to appreciate against the dollar, maybe because of the carry trade. But um, what you can do is you can actually use the skew. And this is the skew is something that's it's sometimes even for professionals, they misunderstand it a lot. And what you want to do is you kind of need to see it in a picture form to have a, have a clear understanding. And this would be very easy to do. Now, this, this is for the FX currency. Let me kind of give you some other examples of different kind of SKUs. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.